Welcome back to Insights on Responsible Business, a new podcast about business within a broader landscape than selling products and services to the market. It's about making an impact that matters to society, to the environment, to you. Because business isn't possible without people and trust. Now more than ever, it's the right time for responsible business. In today's episode, we talk about how such businesses can think through rare or unusual incidents in the healthcare space by drawing analogies. Are there similarities in the challenges faced in healthcare on the one hand and in cybersecurity on the other? Can you make any comparisons between dealing with a virus in the cyberspace and a virus in the healthcare space? That begs a deeper question. People who deal with global cyber attacks and those who deal with healthcare pandemics use very similar terminology, terms like virus or identification of infected hosts. Why is this? Maybe they've learned from each other on how to identify and deal with such viral risks. Maybe the potential for further collaboration between the two sectors is greater than we think as the world continues to grapple with the corona crisis. And we've got just the kind of leaders in the room to hold this conversation. The host of this podcast, Sir Rob Wainwright, has decades of experience dealing with international, global cyber attacks as the former head of Europol, the EU's law enforcement agency. He led the establishment of the European Cybercrime Center, which has become the focal point for all major cybercrime investigations across Europe. And our guest today is Lucien Engelin. He brings years of insightful experience in healthcare. He's advised the board of directors at Radboud University Medical Center. He's faculty at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine, and he's published the book Augmented Healthcare. The end of the beginning. Please enlighten us, gentlemen. Over to you. Well, thank you, Rodney. And it's a warm welcome to our listeners and to you, Lucien. Thank you. And thank you for joining me in our virtual podcast room today. Now, let's explore this issue of the apparent similarities in our experience of fighting both cyber and biological viruses. Now, the point Rodney made, of course, about the same terminology, viruses, antivirus solutions, for example, I think that just shows us that the early concepts of cybersecurity, as they evolved in the 80s and 90s, were borrowed from healthcare. And since then, I've seen how the cyber field has grown so quickly in so many ways. And you, of course, Lucy, and I think you've been similarly immersed in the health healthcare sector. So let's, let's compare our notes about how deep these points of connection go. We'll start with trying to understand the respective problems that each sector is trying to address. And let's bring you right back to this current crisis. And Lucien, as you take a step back from that, what is it about this pandemic that makes it such a challenge for healthcare sectors everywhere at the moment? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me, Rob. I think there's indeed a couple of similarities and also starting points in it. Uh, as, as we can see in all kinds of programs right now, it's about the spread of this virus in terms of bringing from a pandemic into this, from an epidemic into this pandemic aspect of it. It's all about the speed as well. It's about the impact, about neglect even at some times. So the biggest challenges are now is that we thought we were prepared for some of these aspects and crisis situations. And in fact, we are. But we also have been caught a bit by surprise by the speed, by the spread, and also the impact of all the measurements that we have to take right now. Can I just, I mean, you're caught by surprise. I mean, I just want to challenge you on that, on that, Lucien, because um, I get the point about, you know, how how quickly these these global viruses can spread. Cybersecurity, well, they've gotten used to that the last few years. If you remember WannaCry, which just a few years ago, 2017, you know, quickly, in a matter of one weekend, infected 200,000 systems in 150 different countries. You know, so there are great similarities there. But at the same time, when you say you've been surprised by it, I think for my world, if, 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 if I was running that as a defense against why we were surprised by a major terrorist attack, 
you know, people will be accusing me of an intelligence failure, which is, you know, very often a newspaper headline. The point is that in industries like this, we're meant to understand where these where these threats are coming from and we're meant not to be surprised is that is that am i being unfair there could you just explain a bit more? no i don't think it's unfairness i think the, the the reason i brought this up is that we know that these things are going to happen the question always is when and where and i think that's the surprise aspect of it although we are surprised uh, we are prepared we have prepared by country and even by region for instance and maybe a bit less on European level and even less more on a global level for these kind of outbreaks in the end of the day. Um, so for me, the surprise aspect is that it always happens during your watch uh, and, and not prepared for that. Like the WannaCry um, uh, virus also happened at a moment in time when nobody was expecting it at a place where nobody was expecting it at that very moment in time, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think the parallels that we're talking about here today with cyber, I want, want to cry. In fact, if I was to make the cyber analogy, uh, the, the healthcare analogy, want to cry actually had a vaccine already ready to go. It's just, you know, there was an antiviral solution. It just wasn't actually uploaded by enough companies in, in due time. I think the problem that we have, of course, with, with Corona is there isn't a vaccine yet. And in cyber terms, what that makes it, to use our language, is a zero-day threat. Now, these are uh, computer viruses for which there is no yet antiviral software patch. You know, you're running uh, uh, in the wild, you're hit by this, and there is no uh, a patching solution right now. And zero days are, are the worst nightmare for the cybersecurity community. And, you know, we might come on to discuss about how we have to deal with this rather everyday nature, because it happens a lot more often, perhaps, in the world of seeing... Uh, biological pandemics but is i mean that, that has to be part of it though lucian isn't it? it of course that we don't have a vaccine and and therefore we can't mobilize a response in 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 some of the conventional ways that we're used to yes i think that the analogy here is that we need a patch in this case a virus and a vaccine for a zero day outbreak because we didn't know that it was coming in this way and 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 not really prepared for that the the interesting thing is that we're now going into this crisis mode where through this response recovery and mitigation and preparing actually is also the same as is being utilized, I think, within the cyber community, isn't it? I think you've got a point. I mean, I, I think in terms of, of architecting the right solutions here, you know, I can't help, help noticing in, in the cyber field. We didn't get this right from the start, you know, when... I remember speaking to you know Vince Cerf, a great computer scientist, one of the original founders of the internet, and even Tim Berners Lee in a separate discussion. You know, both of these freely admit actually that that establishing an internet based on security uh, wasn't really part of the discussion at that time, and so we've been playing catch up ever since. I think where the initial design was around having a very utilitarian, very easy to use, convenient approach. Now we have. Uh, something uh, that that suddenly security has become a major concern, and in playing that catch up in in something that's become a much more globalized digital ecosystem, where there are dangers lurking around every corner. You know, I I just wonder if if there's the same analogy here. Are you playing catch up? Are, are we globally connected in the right way to sort of architect a, a response to what is uh, a, a global problem now? Well, let me take it from a different angle in this, Rob. Uh, one of the things that I dearly think that is needed for healthcare is that we should try to get more digitization in healthcare in the broader sense of it. We're still stuck in healthcare to running interventions on locations, like a hospital or like a GP practice and things like that. Where on the other hand, in society, we've seen the use of digital technology like um, uh, video conferencing, uh, 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 telefo- smartphones, of course, and, and, st- and stuff like that. A lot of those things also could be utilized in healthcare. With it comes a payload, so to speak, that the risk is increasing based on the number of moments that people could try to breach that on purpose or all of a sudden uh, uh, unexpectedly. So what we see now in this during this pandemic of corona is that there's a lot of information being sent out in terms of resources about corona this is being spread perfectly by what tim berners lee and vin surf has have invented back in the days and and with it comes also this risks of it 
We see this happening over and over again. People are clicking on some of the links that they have without any notice of it. So with that also comes new risks. And in terms of that perspective, I think we're playing catch up. We're trying to bring good purpose and good utilization of tools towards people so they don't have to travel back and forth to hospitals. We can monitor them on a remote aspect of it. We utilize data, certainly now in this pandemic area, to create great insights based on uh, on, on graphs, based on artificial intelligence and prediction models. Um, so I also think that that also resembles very much what happened also during the, uh, the, the start of it, actually. Well, actually, I think it also resembles very much what the challenge is on every sector right now, not just healthcare, in the sense that as we digitize our, our lives more and more, as we connect our, ourselves and our work to uh, this uh, global ecosystem, a digital ecosystem, I think, I think you know, we're opening our, ourselves to more, more, more points of vulnerability. I, I think that there's a challenge about how we can do that in a safe way, whether or not we have cybersecurity as a cultural standard, maybe, and thinking about how, how that affects our, how digitization works. I think in the cybersecurity world, we see, therefore, that being exploited every day. Luckily, we don't have pandemics every day. But because of that, you know, there are maybe some solutions here. We, we've learned the, the, the value of taking um, social isolation techniques, for example. We segment our networks. Our most vulnerable parts of our society, digital society, are segmented. Social Obviously, distancing in a different way. Uh, well, it is. I mean, more or less on a permanent basis because the threats are coming every day. So, but it's the same concept. Segmentation works, I guess. You know, I think it's the same. Well, it is. And, and even, again, all, um, we also had a bit about this terminology. Uh, you said we don't have this pandemics in cyber. But that's, that's too question, I think. I think the aspects of a, of a pandemic is that it's a worldwide spread. And if you could think that a cyber breach on a specific location is more like an epidemic in that region or in that company, uh, having breaches across the world, very, pretty much in my opinion, is a pandemic. And the response to that also could be great similarities between how you tackled that in the early days of the first cyber crimes and how we are doing the same now in healthcare. Uh, just one example. Um, Unfortunately, we needed this pandemic, so to speak, to get the message across to people that they should use uh, good hygiene to make sure that nothing spreads. And now it's the coronavirus. But we always knew that it was the case and you need these certain hygiene measurements to take uh, to take great control and, and stay healthy in it. Now, all of a sudden, everybody knows. Everybody talks about this. And that's the same also whenever you have a cyber breach uh, in that moment in time, people are on the top notch of their minds on these aspects. But what's ha what will happen in two, three, four, five, or six months after now? Is that still the same? Well, this is the, my point about culture, Lucien, I think, mm. because the challenge we keep coming back to in so many of our, of our industries on, on cybersecurity is you've got to take it more seriously. It, it, you've got to introduce it in, into the cultural domain of the way in which your businesses think about how to expand its digitization process in a, in a more responsible way. You know, we've been telling cyber users for the last decade about washing their hands or the equivalent of that in terms of not clicking on the links. You know, the connection is there. Will we go back to the normal again? I mean, this is an issue at the heart of responsible business, I think, in the sense that we have to be more responsible. We have to conduct our business in a more responsible way, thinking about the effects that we have now on glo on a global scale. And and I just wonder if that culture of responsible business, of leadership, of making sure that we really learn the lessons of this current crisis, whether or not that's likely to to take hold in in the healthcare sector in ways that I don't often see, perhaps, in the cybersecurity world. Uh, that is to see, to be honest. We also see in the Netherlands, and last week during one of the weekends, we've seen how some of the people in society keep uh, uh, going about with this by even going on to the beach and in parks and stuff like that. So the moment it at eases a bit... Does it kind of um, uh, get relief also in terms of the importance of it or not? So maybe 
some of your lessons that you've learned, how you, with all the breaches and the cyber management, uh, cyber risk management, we can learn also in healthcare. Uh, how do you bring this on top of the mind? Yeah, you're, not gonna, you're not going to stop everyone from going to the beach on the weekend from, you know, because it, it is, of course, you're asking people to do something that, of course, is very much goes against the grain, albeit for, for the most important of reasons. But, but in the same way in the cyber world, we, we're never going to stop everyone, all our users, from clicking on that link. And so, you know, the real challenge becomes the effect of them clicking on that link has to then be, be has to be designed into how you deal with containing the problem. And it's the same, I think. Uh, with what you're you're describing here, there's one other area that I think is important in terms of again going back to this agenda of responsible business. I think what we learn to deal with cyber global problem, global pandemic, in many in many in many cases, cannot deal with it therefore in isolation in the sense in your own industry or even in your own country. The idea of global collaboration across multi sectors, across different geographies, between governments and and the private sector. How much of, of, of this current crisis exposed the lack of that in, in, in healthcare and dealing with pandemics? Or are you quite satisfied that, that, that you know, we're in a strong, strong position here? Um, well, I think, let me answer it in two parts, one on the cyber world aspect of it and one on the pandemic world of it. In terms of the cyber world aspect of it, still in the curriculum of training for medical doctors and nurses and other people, the cyber risks are not on top of the minds, are not in the curriculum, uh, as is also not available um, a lot of stuff about digitization of healthcare, for instance. Uh, so that's not the things that we train new physicians and new nurses at the very moment. We've been able to change the curriculum for medical students in Radboud University Medical Center back in 2015, and it will take us to the early 2022 before the first ones physicians will graduate from that curriculum. So there is a lag time of seven years. And meanwhile, they've been trained on all kinds of things that have to, uh, to do with anatomy and pathology and all kinds of other aspects. So my point here is we have to stuck it into the educational part of it. It should well, be why something... Why is it not there already? I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. Well, one of the I mean, reasons... You can't be the only voice that's been saying this, Lucien. No, but the, 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 the reality is that it's it's a battle to get good stuff and good information in these educational programs because there's a new treatment for oncology there's a new intervention for radiology and that all has to be stuck into those programs um, up until very recent that was not part of the curricula that we're facing that is going to happen as we speak uh, but it will take a generation to have that on a i think a proper level for it um so, so i think that that's one aspect the, the second aspect is also uh, from the healthcare perspective being trained to handle these things this is not again this is not in the curriculum uh, to how to handle a pandemic what is in there is the pathology of diseases and if you're being going to be trained as a virologist for instance that is included in it but if you become an internist or if you become a cardiologist there is only very low information of that in the curriculum in the early days, and then you kind of specialize into it. So here as well, it will take a generation. I think dealing with pandemic, I think you're right. And dealing with pandemics, of course, involve much more than the healthcare sector. As we're seeing right now, governments have a huge responsibility. So many other parts yeah. of, of society have. I think one of the ways we found of, of dealing with cybersecurity, a lot of sort of scenario-based playing, a lot of testing of that system, including the multiple parts. That's maybe one of the learning lessons here. I, I tell you what, I, as a layman, I tell you what I've been impressed, however, in the, in, in the response of the healthcare sector is the way in which it's been mobilized mm -hmm. in such a positive spirit, the way in which it's mobilized to society, volunteers offering to, to, to help. Wonderful to see. And if there's one legacy I'd like to see is some of that still being taken hold in in the way that we we collaborate with one another, and there's learning lessons in in my community for what I've seen from. I really would love that that would be the lesson that we learned, but I think you and I both know how this also works in reality. Uh, everyone that has gone through this period of time that we're facing right now will know, and they will reflect even in ten or fifteen or twenty five years from now. But somebody that has not lived and seen firsthand what happens, including this great collaboration and camaraderie that's that's up uh, uh, 
up and running right now, it's very easy to neglect. And and we probably in 25 years or what uh, of something like that, we really have to relearn all those things again. Like many of those things that people in elderly elderly people would reflect on what happened like 50 or 60, 70 years ago. It's hard to keep this top of mind when you did not live this and seen this firsthand yourself, I'm afraid. I think that's how culture works. It is. And and culture works also by being influenced by events. And I think the you know the the footprint of human history, as as you, you very well explain, is is what shapes different understandings and, and major changes in the way that, that governments, industries and societies deal with that. And so, I mean, on that note, rather optimistic maybe note, uh, Lucien, uh, let's, it's time to bring this podcast to a close. Thank you for being our, our guest today. Um, I think as we look ahead at what legacy this pandemic will leave for the healthcare sector, we, uh, we see increasing parallels with the world of cyber that's already here, increased risks from the rapid spread of global viruses and increased vulnerabilities from how we're making ourselves, our lives, our work more dependent on this digital ecosystem that we've been exploring today. And hidden in those parallels are some useful lessons from cyber and healthcare on how to more safely navigate that ecosystem. I think together as a more connected community, certainly, and within this new corporate spirit of responsible business. And on that positive note, Thank you for listening today. Thanks for listening to another episode of our journey towards responsible business. We hope you enjoyed it and you'll tune in for our next episode. Review us on Spotify, the iTunes podcast app, or whatever popular podcast app you're using and find out more on Deloitte.nl. We'll see you in our next episode.